So, yeah, it's also right up like with when, when you put it in, mm. I mean, you can obviously then just bend that yeah. to wherever you want. Yeah. And then you just chuck that in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So it's on at the moment, and then there's the other half leave. Cool. So, yeah. so why don't we start like bottom sure. left and work across, and then we'll go another row up and another row up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like, so so what you do is you go down there and you say, okay, so, um, one. So you just read out the numbers to me. Yeah. And then um, yeah, so you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then yeah. All right. So if we start at this torch here. Okay. You ready? That's like, yeah, so that's okay. bottom left torch. Yeah. One, yeah. And then we'll do another one here by the fungi of that Two, side. yeah. And then we'll do another one here. What do you think that part is? I'm not a clue. Any, any wild guess? Uh, maybe like 100. 240. Wow. <laughs> that's high. Yeah. Oh. Next one. <laughs> okay, they've gone. Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. So Rowan from Coral Nation came around to help me par test my tank, which is something I've always wanted to do. I never got the opportunity to do it on my old tank, unfortunately, but with my new Dream Reef tank fully set up, running full of coral and all the lighting in uh, the format that I think it's gonna be for at least the foreseeable future, I wanted to get some par numbers to, to really give me an accurate view of what kind of par my corals were getting, better inform my decisions around coral placement, and just help me understand how certain things are behaving in my tank in relation to lighting. For those of you that don't know Coral Nation, they're a coral propagation facility that's operating right here in Melbourne. They're predominantly growing out aquacultured zoanthids. I've got a massive range of all the best zoa species out there, the named ones, some of the common ones, the rare ones, and the ultra rare ones. So a good mix for everyone. And they've just set up a brand new facility, which I did go and check out. Unfortunately, I'm not going to show you any uh, details about that in this video. Um, we'll hold that off for a future video when they're, when they're ready to share it with the public. But yeah, they're doing some really great things in the industry and I really want to support Coral Nation. One thing that they offer is if you do any order over $100 and you're in Melbourne, uh, you can add on to that order for 25 bucks and get Rowan to personally come out and do a par test of your tank which is absolutely mind-boggling value. Even if you don't want to order any of their corals, it only costs an extra 15 bucks for a delivery fee, so it would be uh, $40 for the par test, which is amazingly cheap. Rowan's got a really high quality par meter, knows how to use it, has it linked intelligently to his phone so he can email you all the results, and uh, yeah, just really give you that insight into the actual lighting values of your tank. Because while you can go on YouTube and look up channels like BRS that have done par testing on every single light under the sun, their testing methodology isn't exactly what I'd call real world. They perform their tests predominantly on two foot cube tanks, which not many people have. And also they do it in an empty tank, which is just not realistic. Most tanks have a sand bed. Most tanks have either a clear back panel with a white wall behind them or a black back panel like mine does. And a lot of tanks have Euro braces, they have wave makers disrupting the surface of the water, and they have all kinds of other factors that can dramatically throw out the PAR numbers. So while the clinical testing that BRS does in a two foot cube is extremely valuable and is a great starting point for when you're selecting a light, it won't actually tell you what par you can expect to receive in your tank under the specific circumstances of your rock work, sand, lighting conditions, reflections, mounting heights, uh, and surface disruption of the water according to how your wave makers are set. The only way to know the actual par of an actual position in your tank is for you to measure it yourself. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the light meters are just not that accessible out there. So it's really great that um, you know, Rowan and Coral Nation have taken the step to start offering this service here in Melbourne. 
I'm aware that some local fish stores in other states offer a similar service. So if you're in Queensland or New South Wales and you know of someone else doing it um, in those areas, please post it in the comments down below. Anyway, the way the par testing worked uh, was that we started in the bottom left-hand corner of the tank and we took seven readings in a row moving across to the bottom right-hand corner of the tank. Then we went up about 150 mil, repeated the process, went up another 150 mil, repeated the process, and again, and then also did a couple of key spots like my fra specific frag racks that I wanted to do, and then did a final pass along the very surface of the water. It's not particularly valuable. You're not gonna have coral literally growing out of the water, or at least not yet anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted that as a, as a last pass as well. So here you can see the results. Um, I've mapped it all out on this photo of my tank. Um, I hope it's readable. It took me a fair while to get all these numbers uh, onto the image, but uh, you can pause the video and consume it, but I'll leave it up on the screen for a while while I talk about it as well. I guess the takeaway here is there's quite a few things that you wouldn't necessarily expect in these par readings, where perhaps there's a value that's lower down in the tank that's in fact higher than the value above it or vice versa and things like that. And there's a, num a number of reasons for these results. One is I'm using the narrow beam reflectors on my Kessels, which punch that light deeper. And what that means is that the uh, single point light source or the V of light that's coming out from the lens is gonna overlap with the light next to it. Now, if that V is really wide, the overlapping occurs at a higher point in the tank. If it's really narrow, like it is with a narrow beam reflector, it's going to occur at a lower point in the tank. So it's possible that a, a reading in a higher location can be lower than a reading in a lower location if one reading is higher than the crossover of those two Vs of light being emitted from the two Kessels. Another thing, and this is something that certainly the BRS testing would never really take into account, is the impact of the reflections on your glass and your sand bed, which can be absolutely dramatic. My reef right strips are angled slightly inwards to each other, and that's gonna create a big reflection at a certain point on the front panel glass, and a fairly weak reflection on my rear panel glass, which is black, and black doesn't reflect light very well. So to that, um, so as a result of that, there's some differing readings around the tank as well where the reflections from the reef bright are causing a higher par at a certain point, but then deeper into the tank, or I should say further back into the tank, it doesn't provide that higher value because it's getting not or not getting reflected from the back glass. So, so yeah, there's some really interesting numbers in here, but despite all of that, one thing you'll note about the readings on my tank is they are remarkably consistent across the, across the board for the most part. A good majority of my tank from the bottom to about two thirds of the way up is sitting in the 180 to 250 par range. And that's not a, that, that's a really good range to be in for a vast number of corals. It might be verging on a little bit high for some LPS, particularly things like ACANs, and maybe a little bit low for some of the more picky SPS, particularly if you're trying to drive really strong colors. But you'll also note that I have hotspots in the areas you would expect that are pushing 300 par. Uh, and as it gets higher, I could enter my area, which is currently open water. Uh, and you, as judging by the readings right at the water's surface, there's going to be a, um, a range of 300 to 600 par available to me for future growth up in these type of areas uh, where there's currently no coral growth. But once the colonies get huge, I'm sure they'll love that. You'll also note that my frag racks are getting 100 par and 110 par respectively. And despite them being quite high up in the tank, there's a good reason for why that par is lower. One of them is partially shaded by the gyre above it, and both of them are also partially shaded by the Euro brace on my tank, which will be blocking some light as well. Again, these are other factors that are unique to my tank that you might not otherwise consider if you're just taking raw par readings from a very clinical test in an open empty two foot cube. Additionally, the role of multiple lights overlapping on each other plays a big part in the end par reading and on the edges of the tank you don't get as much of that overlapping because they're only being illuminated by one light or, or the very ends of the reef bright strips uh, and so that's going to impact the par as well.
So I guess this really just goes to show that higher is like higher in your tank is not always stronger in par and lower in your tank is not always weaker in par. You really should consider getting your tank par tested to really arm you with that information that's gonna help you know where the high and low points in your tank's light coverage actually are and what corals are gonna be suitable for what locations. This has certainly given me a lot to think about, particularly where my ACAN garden is currently located. Before this par testing, I thought that would have been a fairly low par area. It is partially shadowed along one edge by the, uh, the rock work above it, but the parts that aren't shadowed are actually getting really strong par, in part due to reflection from the main front glass panel. And they're actually getting stronger par than a position higher above. So I might want to consider moving my ACANs into lower light, as they're a notorious coral for uh, being uh, picky about the amount of light you give them. Similarly, scollies that I've just had down in the sand bed and assuming that they would be getting maybe 60 or 80 par because they're down low in my tank are actually getting far more light than I otherwise thought and so maybe I should consider pushing them into a partially shadowed area in the sand bed rather than being completely open and exposed in the sand bed. And again I would have had absolutely no way to know this without par testing my tank. But yeah that's all for today I hope you found this video helpful. Go check out Coral Nation for some awesome corals and this par testing service if you're in Melbourne. Their new facility is coming online soon and I can't wait to share that with you. Additionally, hit the like button, comment down below, and please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content, it really helps me out. Anyway, that's all for today. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the ReefNode YouTube channel. Bye for now.